Hey guys, so the new D&D Honor Among Thieves trailer just dropped and I was really excited to watch it and talk about it. I wanted to watch it with you guys and maybe point out some things that I notice uh, from the D&D universe that maybe those less familiar wouldn't notice and uh, talk about it, maybe explain what it is a little bit. So let's check it out together. Hey guys, so I thought I would do a quick video. The Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves trailer just dropped. So I thought be a good time to do a quick video, watch it, uh, react to it with you guys, and point out some things I see that maybe uh, some non Dungeons and Dragons people didn't notice. Maybe help you help explain it a little bit. Maybe get the movie hype up a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start it. Here's the thing we're a team of thieves. Okay, so right off the rip, this city, I do believe, is Waterdeep. Um, Waterdeep is a city on the Sword Coast, which is where a lot of 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons adventures take place. Uh, could be Neverwinter, but I do believe it is Waterdeep because of the dragon statue. Um, Waterdeep is the biggest city on the Sword Coast. Uh, pretty much it has... So many shops. That Waterdeep's like, if you can't buy something at Waterdeep, then you probably just can't buy it. Uh, we're going to keep going here. And when you do this, you're bound to make enemies. Sometimes those enemies come looking for revenge. Oh, nice. So that is a... Uh, we'll pause it right here for a second. That is a black dragon there one of the chromatic dragons in dungeons and dragons chromatic dragons so you have red blue black white green you know base colors are always evil metallic dragons uh gold platinum uh brass those dragons are usually good uh drag black uh black dragons in particular are chaotic evil so they're pretty much one of the more evil dragons you can have in there. Their breath weapon, they don't spit fire like a normal dragon. It's its like an acid they spit out that just melts you down. That's what we see there, that black ichor that he's spitting out on these people. Ooh, nice little Led Zeppelin. A whole lot of love. Truth be told, uh, this looks like we the wrong person could be the, the, wrong the Nalander Isles. The Looks like a lich. Ever known. Okay, so, so a couple things I noticed there. Uh, it looks like that that was a lich. Uh, he said, greatest evil the world has ever known. So um, I don't think it's Vecna uh, because this looks like it takes place on the Sword Coast and Vecna. That's just not where Vecna's origin is. I don't think they would, they would do that. Uh, but it did appear to be a lich. It, it is actually dressed exactly like the lich picture of the licks from the uh dungeon masters guy uh this lady let's back up a little bit right here uh probably some sort of wizard it looks like she casts the spell shield uh to block these arrows from hitting her right here so keep going but we're gonna fix it so how do we pull that off Ooh, that's all something else let's well, back it up a little bit so this forest right here right we got a cool little forest. Uh, Pull that off. And this spider uh, crawling up this tree. It out over a drink. I think it might be. Uh, they give us a fighting chance. Uh, what are they called? You got this, right? I know you don't. Not sure what kind of spider it is, but it is a. Uh, it is one of the. It's in the monsters menu. Magic. Uh, looks like a paladin, a sorcerer, tiefling. Nice tiefling druid turn, turning into an owl bear. So. When the owlbear is, you see it right there. It is a uh, scientific creation, a, a magical creation. Uh, mages have created it by mixing an owl and a bear. And it turns into this thing. And it looks kind of cute a little bit, but it's one of the most terrifying creatures that you can encounter. And a druid, one of the abilities a druid has is called wild shape. They can... Uh, transform into creatures that they have seen before. So at some point, this tiefling, uh, which is a race in D&D, &D, 
has uh, seen an owlbear, and now she can transform into an owlbear and wreck people. Uh, what a tiefling is that they have their lineage traced back to the, uh, the nine hells, uh, sort of like a, a mix of like a demon and a person. Uh, so she looks human, uh, but she has horns, and she has like a, a demon tail, if you notice, when it shows her again. What is that again? It's an owlbear. Oh. And that appeared to be ooh, a couple things right there. Let's back it up again. So that may be, um, I mean, it looks a little bit like a gold dragon, but it doesn't look, I don't think they would just do this bad CGI. I think that is maybe a golem of a gold dragon. Made to look like a gold dragon. Wait, we'll have to wait till the movie's out or maybe another trailer to see what that is. Uh, it looks like she cast Dimension Door there. there is evil. A Dimension Door is a spell that you can cast. It's like a teleportation spell that allows you to travel further distances instantly. Yeah. I'm glad he's on our side. So those guys they're fighting there there's a race of dark elves called the Drow. And uh, they worship a uh, goddess called Loth. Um, Lolith, however you want to pronounce it, I've heard it both ways. She's uh, the queen of spiders. That's why the spider in the forest kind of piqued my interest because I kind of seen the draw before. So I'm wondering if maybe she is the true big bad evil of this sh movie. We'll have to see. Uh, she is not a uh, a good goddess though. She is definitely evil. Uh, she's very chaotic evil. Uh, lightning bolt, fireball looks like the shield. This one's dangerous. Ooh, a mimic. But whatever happens. So, what a mimic is, let's back it up so you can see that mimic. It's a good one. It looks good. Yeah, I think. So, mimic uh, can look like a, a number of things. Uh, most iconically, treasure chests, because who doesn't want to open a treasure chest, right? They can look like uh, doors, tables, corpses, any, any inanimate object. Um, what they do, they use that as a camouflage to lure people in, and when people try to interact with them, they uh, emit a sticky substance, so you have a hard time getting away, and they smack you to death with these pseudopods, which is what uh, tries to smack her right here, but and happens. basically devour you. Oh, wow. So, let's go back again. So many things all at once. We'll have to go back. But whatever happens. So, right here, this uh, cat-like creature... It's called a displacer beast. And basically a displacer beast is a panther with an extra arm on either side and these two huge tentacles you see coming off its back. They're called displacer beasts because they have an ability called displace where they can basically use this ability to trick your mind so you're not exactly sure where they are. Uh, it's like an illusion, like illusion magic kind of. So to dive away from this displacer beast, they're diving into something else, another monster from the Monster Manual, which is a gelatinous cube. It's one of the more iconic monsters from Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, it's a 10 by 10 by 10 foot cube of just ooze. Uh, why it's cube shape? Probably when they were making the game early on, they thought we need something that can block a hallway. Here it is. Uh, it's acidic inside, so it will... Uh, begin to slowly harm them, I'm assuming. I don't know how it will work in a movie. But way, the way this is used in games a lot is uh, they can be translucent or they can be completely transparent. So a lot of people will block hallways off with them or have them fall, and people just walk right into them because they can't see them. Or like maybe you'll have one at the bottom of a pit trap. So a pit opens and you fall into a gelatinous cube or a pit opens above and it falls behind you and blocks your exit. Uh, but yeah, they're diving right into it to get away from this displacer beast. Uh, I think I would have taken my chances with the beast, honestly. Let's see. The very next thing I saw immediately, it looked like he was casting Ice Knife, which is a spell uh, that basically is what it says. Ice Knife, he's throwing them. And this uh, cultist here in this red robe has a spell called Misty Step to teleport away, which is uh, in the book, uh, you... You, it's silvery magic. Uh, looks silver when you use it, but here they're sticking with the red robe theme. It's red. You can see the mist come off of them, and it teleports you, you know, 
not as far as Dimension Door or any of those, but it teleports you quite a good distance, 30, 60 feet, something like that away. Watch. That, my friends, will be ready. Was a red dragon, fat red dragon. Uh, it's another one of the chromatic dragons. They are evil as well, but not as chaotic as the black dragons. They have fire breath, like they're the classic dragon. Uh, they are natural enemies with dwarves. It's a fun, fun fact about red dragons. But they are the most fearsome of all the chromatic dragons. Uh, and a lot of people think this is because they were uh, basically the god of dragons is Tiamat. And uh, she was a multiple headed dragon god, but her favorite head was the red dragon head. So this is why the red dragons are the strongest, is the lore. We'll be ready. Looking very good so far. Sicken. What is it exactly that you bring to this? There's the tea flame. I make plans. You've already made the plan, so. If the existing plan fails, I make a new plan. So you make plans that fail? No. He also plays the loot. Not relevant. And it appears that Chris Pye will be playing a bard, which is very fun. So, yeah. I mean, uh, should be a good time. It, I mean, it looks, you know, fantastic to me, honestly, so far. Uh, but, I mean, we'll have to wait and see when more information comes out. But all the things I'm seeing so far... So my worries about the D&D movie was, number one, I mean, I thought, you know, there are some serious campaigns in D&D, but in a movie form, I was afraid they would try to take it too seriously. It's, it's fun. That's why people play it. That's why people want to go watch the movie, because it's a fun movie. So it looks like they're not taking it too seriously. Also, it looks like they are sticking within the D&D lore. I know that Chris Perkins has helped uh, with this movie a lot, and all the guys at Wizards of the Coast have helped with this movie a lot to keep it in in the universe of D&D. So, hey, I'm liking what I see so far. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Uh, you think this movie's going to be a smash hit? It's going to be a flop? Uh, just Just comment. Let us know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when we upload new content. Till next time.